Kansas City. I can't wait to get to your wonderful town. I'll be there January 20th through the 22nd. Get your tickets for those dates and all dates at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for coming out and supporting the Night Pants Nation Tour. We're having a hell of a fun time out there. We've sold out shows in Indy, Baltimore, Cleveland, La Jolla. I mean, it's a hell of a time. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll be hitting Kansas City. In January, January 20th to the 22nd, Kansas City, Missouri. Get your tickets now at ryansickler.com. Join the email list. You'll be the first to know about a bunch of upcoming events and things. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, please. I say it all, all the time. It's nothing to you, and it's everything to us, all right? Just hit that subscribe if you're watching, and thank you for your support. The Patreon show, you guys are just killing it with the stories. I mean, holy shit. It's five bucks a month. I'm not raising the price on it at all. It's going to stay five, and um, you get the Honey Do a Day Early ad free at no additional cost, all right? And if you sign up for a year, you get over a month free. So it actually is a good deal to do that if you're in for the long haul, all right? The HoneydoPodcast.com is the website, and if you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, please submit it to HoneydoPodcast at gmail.com, all right? Um you guys know what we do over here. We highlight the low lights, and uh, this is a little special holiday honeydew here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have this man back on the podcast. Please welcome back to the honeydew, Josh Potter, everybody. Welcome hey, back to the honeydew. What's up, dude? Thank Thanks you. for thank, having me. Thank you for coming in for a holiday I clap edition. for myself. <laughs> you should clap for yourself. We're clapping, dude. Hell yeah. Um, dude. Plug whatever you want first, please. Uh, well, uh, the Josh Potter Show every Tuesday on YouTube. Please to be subscribing to that. Also, uh, gigs. I got Milwaukee Improv on the 23rd of January. And then a week after that, on the 30th, uh, West Nyack Levity Live. Then on the 2nd of February, Pittsburgh Improv, and the 3rd of February, Raleigh Improv. So all those shows, come on out. We're going to add more at J underscore Potter on Twitter and at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram. That's where you can find out about all that stuff and more. Well, that's about yeah, it, yeah, go get tickets. Go check them out. Yeah, um, Thank you for coming in. Thank you for closing out the year with me. Oh, thanks for having me. My first video guest ever. Nice little wrap up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Episode, Episode 13. 13 yeah, bro. That's right, dude. That's right. That's my lucky number. So is it really? Yeah. I was no born shit. on the 13th. See, it works perfect. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know what number this is. I think but... I was ep episode 69 too. That's always a good number to be. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Um I wanted to talk to you just about some holiday, some I wanted to have a lighthearted conversation <laughs> instead of uh, a lot of the in depth stuff we get all the time. Sure, but just about some uh holiday honeydew moments because I know I have plenty of mine and I was like, let me call Josh Potter and see what he's yeah, got. I've got so. a few of those myself actually. We were talking about uh, well, I was I bought my nephew a crazy toy first time I got to do that. I'm gonna be the crazy uncle, yeah, that just buys how old is he? He's two, about to be three, okay. So what'd you get? I got him a Power Wheels. He loves a Spider-Man cartoon on Disney Plus. Patrick Stump does the theme song. It's an awesome show. There's like eight episodes and he knows like the words to all of them. Isn't it crazy how they memorize it's shit crazy. that fast? Like I don't he maybe just maybe started we talking. did. I don't remember if I did. I mean, if I did, it was like Ninja Turtles, I guess, maybe or something. My mom always would say, She's like, You've seen this thing a thousand times. I remember her like yelling at me about that stuff, but now I feel like kids he knows how to work an iPad like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. I think he knows how to work it better than I do. He, my daughter's showing me shit on my phone. No no <laughs> lie. I swear to God. I'm like, wait, how'd you do that with that maps right there? She's like, oh, you just put it in here and this is ride shares. I'm like, holy That's shit. That's hilarious. My father's wife has this game and she like got to a level and she's stumped. And then one day she caught him playing it and he like got it past that level. Nah. -uh. Yeah. <laughs> and he like barely talks. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, so I bought him that. But I was thinking back to the Power Wheels I got as a kid. So Power Wheels, for people that don't know, is like those little motorized Jeeps or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They make Two them all kinds of crazy Two kids can fit in them. Now. Yeah. They're like, they have like Lambos now. 
Yeah, I've seen some And of I was going to buy like shit. some crazy ass Lamb, but I was like, that's more for me than it is for him. He doesn't want a fucking yeah. Lamborghini. So I got him the Spider-Man car. And my brother-in-law's already like, where am I going to fucking put this? <laughs> He's already mad at me. I can't wait to buy him like a drum set. Well, you that's know, like, what I used to do. Get the, the crazy annoying, shit. Get yeah, the finger yeah, yeah, paints yeah, yeah. and shit fucking up the house. Well, did you have revenge on you when you had a kid then? Did your... I mean, people bought... That's what you get for kids. You know what I mean? I'll tell you the revenge on me is those fucking... Uh, their kits, uh, jewelry, of beads. Oh, oh motherfucker. Boy. One of those open <laughs> motherfucking beads. You're beads like, everywhere. God You're, yeah, you're yeah, vacuuming yeah. that shit up for fucking... I'd rather white paint. <laughs> I would, because you're, really? you're never... You're never you never get them all. Yeah, you still yeah, yeah. you'll step on one. You're like fuck. Right, you never in your step heel. on no. paint. Yeah, exactly. No, but um, I remember when I was a kid, we'd get like uh, my parents would buy us crazy gifts every now and then. My dad bought us a Nintendo, like the eight bit Nintendo, when that came out, and I wanted it so bad, and he got it, but it was just the box when I opened it, and they acted like there was like, oh, they forgot to put it inside. Nah, they, 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 it's they, like before viral videos or like Jimmy Kimmel was fucking with kids, you know? And my dad just did that for fun. Like, there was no video. <laughs> right. Yeah, it yeah, was just to right. fuck with us for like the whole day. <laughs> Wait, he did it for the whole day? Oh, yeah, the end of the day, he's like, oh, nah, yeah, nah. We, found like, about, we found this in the hall. <laughs> That's that is good. That's cool. No as video fuck. or the anything either. Day. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah, just for now. His they'd own. be like, "Look, it's three hours later, and they're right. still upset." It'd be yeah. on Instagram now or whatever. My dad would be on, you know, Good Morning America or something. I remember. Um, we, I mean, up until our family split apart, which wasn't long into my life, <laughs> but the memories I have, we had good Christmases. Like my father, I rode by recently too. My dad for two years. Bought you, you could go in the woods to this little nursery that grew trees, and you could chop your own tree down. Mm. You bring a fucking chainsaw or an axe, you chop your own tree, and it's like 10 bucks. You know what I mean? You chop yeah. it, you fucking take it's it. It's the experience That's that you're right. paying for. And uh, my dad got two of them with the roots, and we put them in the house, decorated them, and then he planted both of them out front. Of our, or my oh, favorite wild. house, and they they are, and that house was a basement, and then two stories above that. Those trees tower that. So house. you got them with the roots on them. Yeah, you had a no burlap shit. bag, and you just kept it, you know, wet and alive. And then when you were done with using it as a Christmas tree, you took the whole root system and everything, took it out front, dug a hole, pff, buried it, and that month, those are Damn. they're towers now. They're huge. They're yeah. real. They're pine trees. Sure. And they were small when you bought them. Yeah, obviously. regular, like six footer. Yeah. Oh, and, it's, and the roots weren't like everywhere. Nah, not I that big. They were like I'd say a good a good bundle. That's crazy. Though. It, you had to take two hands to hold it and carry sure. it. Yeah. Um. But I remember, and I just found this out recently. This was pretty fucking cool too. They used to have a the fire department would have Santa Claus ride by in yes, the neighborhood, you know, wave and throw some candy and shit. And uh, we have this old video of this and and. I'm looking at the video and I don't see my dad in the video. And then my mother told us recently that was him. And I was like, get the fuck out. Oh, of he here. was Santa. Like, dude, that made me cry. Like, so, like, <laughs> you oh, know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. now I'm like, he went out and did that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's not just like for the whole neighborhood. You know sure. what I mean? And all you get is you get a fucking. That's yeah, all, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's that fast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All that for the hey, hey, like, he just drives right. by. He and now I think about it too. Having twins, dealing with my mom mm -hmm. and my younger brother, sitting on top of that motherfucking fire truck in in costume with those sirens blaring. It was probably the most peaceful. Oh yeah, do you think he had a beer with him? Ever <laughs> fucking <at. laughs> He's like, hey, all right, wow, that He's probably enjoying the shit out of him. Oh yeah. Like, how can I get a moment of peace? <laughs> oh, 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 you motherfuckers. There was a couple of times my grandpa did the, my mom would try to like perpetuate the belief in Santa Claus. So like we're getting older at this point. And my mom would be like, we got to make him believe even harder or whatever. So she would get my grandpa to like. Oh, she wouldn't backyard. lighten up. She'd dig in. Oh, yeah. It's like she was like, they're starting to know. We got to like really make them. And she would do like videos and stuff. Like she had a one of those huge VHS video recorders, cam recorders or whatever they're called. And like she would put in, she goes, Santa left a video. And she'd put it in and it'd be like my grandpa walking around and he'd find the camera and be like, no looking or whatever and turn it off. I'd be like, holy shit. I can't believe we've. We saw him. That's crazy. And then the next year she had my grandpa like stand in the backyard 
and then she'd be like, go to sleep quick, he's here. He's here early. He'd be outside. Yeah, and he's like <laughs> walking around in the backyard. He's here early. Yeah, he's like, the sun wasn't even down. Now like, kids can be like on that NORAD or whatever, <laughs> yeah, 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 or yeah, NORTRAD, yeah. whatever the fuck it's called. I'm like, no, he's not. He's yeah. over Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had the AM radio telling me, I'd be like, they don't know. I got to call it in or something. <laughs> I would want to call the radio station or whatever. But yeah, she would like perpetuate the roost to the point where I found out it took me till sixth grade. <laughs> no, she didn't. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and it was, I remember other I was in. kids weren't telling you. Well, here's the thing, dude. Like, like uh, when nah, other man, kids we saw him. When other kids would tell me, I go, that's just a bad kid who doesn't have Santa come anymore. And that's what their parents that's told them. That's your mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. She would fucking plant that worm. And then. Uh, <laughs> sixth grade. That's dude, a long I remember time. me and my best friend, Chris, were sitting in science class and Mr. D. Zach was his name said something and him and I looked at each like it was about how Santa Claus is not real and him and I looked at each other and we're like what like he was the only other guy that still believed it yeah and we both were like <laughs> <laughs> and his mom because he was like an only child his mom like went in and like lost her mind on the teacher and everything like that like how dare you fucking tell <laughs> her and my mom became friends from that moment on well, we it was look. My daughter is in first grade. Last year, she was already coming to me. Well, now with the computers, I don't know. They but gotta, not only that, you know, you got the older brothers and sisters. Oh, sure, that yeah, are yeah, like, yeah. no, it's not real. And then they're like, my older sister said, I'm, and that's what you got to tell them. Like, oh, that's just because they're bad. And they're not getting right. Shit. You're too young to ruin Santa yet. If you already, yeah, yeah. It, that's but, a, that's it. Always sucks when one figures it out or like loses that sort of uh, belief early on. I feel like it's like they're missing out on. I'm glad it took me forever. Maybe it, I don't know Jewish if it correlates with my virginity. <laughs> my virginity also. <laughs> I lost that late too. I don't know if it all pushed everything. Sad. The Overton window moved. <laughs> it closed for a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's correlated. I am just very stunted as an adult too. So I don't know. Like I feel like I'm just becoming 25 mentally. <laughs> so I'm 10 years behind in everything. I was saying it was the Jewish kid in our neighborhood that kept going around telling everybody that Santa wasn't real. But he wasn't doing – he wasn't just saying, like, my parents said it's not real. He was, like, rubbing it in people's faces. Oh, yeah. He's an asshole. And, uh, yeah, and this one kid just beat his ass. That's you know, hilarious. And then you find out later, like, oh, man, he took – he took – yeah, <laughs> he yeah. wasn't wrong. It was just the way he was doing it. My mom would be like, well, that's just because he's a Jew heathen. <laughs> <laughs> Throws heathen on it. Yeah. <laughs> he's a dastardly Jew. That's why he's saying that. <laughs> Everything was good for a while. Christmas is, I remember too, we had the old school original Star Wars action figures. Ooh. And my dad would tell us, put a couple of them, save them, like, whatever. And my brothers and I would tie uh, fishing line or shoestrings around their necks and slam the doors shut and pull the heads off, oh, you hilarious. know, just torture them while we're playing and shit. And then later, you hear that they're worth a lot of money. You're like, oh, you start going to find Greedo and shit. You're like, yeah, we had him. We yeah, had yeah, his yeah, heads yeah. on fucking Han Solo's body, That's you dumbass. <laughs> See, I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum. I saved all of them in the box. I wasn't allowed to play with them. You weren't allowed to play with them. And my, they're still sitting in a box somewhere. My mom's like, I can't find anyone to no. buy these. And the I'm Star, just, original you know, Star Wars? I mean, it's it's stuff like that. It's Beanie Babies. It's fucking People all that it. shit. Has yeah. she been on eBay? Oh, yeah. She doesn't know how to do it. And I don't know how to. I mean, it's a delusion. You might have of a things. small fortune sitting that, there, she, right? You know, it's funny. I had her on my podcast to talk about Black Friday shopping with Jeremiah. And, now, and Jeremiah said the same thing. Like, why don't you try selling these things? And she's like, well, they're only worth an, as much as someone's willing to pay. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, you got to look, lady. You can't just like sit around and be like. No one's coming to my door asking me for, you know, Princess Diana Beanie Babies and shit like that. So I don't know what she's going to do, but one day we'll, I'll, she'll die and I'll get a bunch of <laughs> Beanie Babies and fucking Ninja Turtles and shit. But starting lineups was another one too. Do you ever have those? Yeah. The action figures. I had a Michael Jordan with hair. And what? I, and my, because he was like, at one point he had hair. He had a little bit. He did. Did he have a little bit though? But they he? put him, they put hair on his head. Like, you have a Jordan with hair? Yeah, but I took it out. Box? I played with it. I'm dunking oh. <laughs> with it and shit. And my dad was so pissed. He brings it up all the time. He's like, you had the Michael Jordan with the hair. You had the Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan. That's like 1989, Jesus. 1990. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even like the, the regular one. It was with the hair. Oh my God. From the high school team he was cut from, for <laughs> yeah, God's yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah, Man. I knew for us, I knew it all shifted when my parents split. 
And then you start bouncing back between homes, right? And I knew Christmas was different when um, we're at my my dad's uh, mom's, my grandma. That's who we call my grandma. You know, that was the grandma. Sure. And um, we're leaving her place, and it's my dad and my two brothers and me, and we're going to the Civic Center in Baltimore to watch a Baltimore Blast game. It's like right after, the day after Christmas or something. We got all our presents from him and everything. It's in the back of our station wagon, our Aspen station wagon, mm. the limited edition wood paneling. Did you, were you sit windows. in the back and you can see out the yeah. back? Okay, yeah. And AM radio comes on, and when you hit the <laughs> accelerator, you hear it in the speakers and shit like that, nice. you know? And we parked. My dad would never pay for a garage. It was always, <laughs> I'm going to find a street spot. We're like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, you go to an event like that, you're driving for 20 fucking minutes oh, in the sure. city trying to find a spot. He finally, like, here, here we go. And we come back after the game, and you just see your shit all over the ground. We're like, nah. Uh-oh. My dad's like, uh-oh. And they stole Christmas. Oh, <laughs> no. They you had Christmas in the car with you? <laughs> Why his was it? whole Christmas. Oh, I see. Because it, it was like he yeah, was about to We had just to gone to get... his place. Fuck. He was put all our shit, take us back to mom's after oh, the game. Jesus. And they, the Baltimore City, boy, they're oh, rude, but they stole God. Christmas, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> they don't give a fuck That's what he's like, there. the Grinch. <laughs> What does he it say? It was clearly yeah. three people shit too in the back. You know what I mean? Dad, Everybody I thought... had an umbro bag for soccer or whatever, an Adidas bag. Oh it shit! Was, it was was loaded up for him. All they had to oh, do was go in there, God. grab this and this and this. They took it all, man. I thought all the Grinch was them. green, Dad, not black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you said that. I don't, I don't know. know, know, know. Yeah, we didn't know. So we didn't see him. Yeah. That's true. Could have been a green person. <laughs> Could have been a green person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Baltimore City stole Christmas. That's I wild. was like, man, shit's different from here on out. I can tell. I can tell it's gonna. This be year, the Grinch is the supply chain. The supply chain's stealing Christmas this year. Oh man, yeah, that was brutal. That was definitely <laughs> fucking brutal. I remember too. Um, still believing or still questioning at the time. Now we're questioning it and uh, looking out our bedroom window and seeing. What, what something red in the fucking sky and shitting ourselves thinking oh, that that was Rudolph. Rudolph. Yeah, yeah was Rudolph. A, a, was a flying a fucking deer with a fucking, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, hustling under those covers. And then you're <laughs> yeah. so excited, you can't get the fucking sure. sleep. Oh my God. I will never. I remember being like, having so much anticipation for Christmas that it would like, I'd feel like I was going to explode. And then all day on Christmas, I couldn't enjoy it because I would be sad that it would end. Right, and I remember I would just cry Can't all enjoy day. The moment. Cry, yeah. you were. You I would, would be like tortured by the fact that it was going to end. I'd be like, "It's going to end tonight," and my mom would be like, "Well, have fun then," and I'd be like, "No, it's over." Like I was, the depression after Christmas, even as a kid, was like crazy. But at, it it changed like for me. Tell me, it was just like because it was so much. Fun. Like all my whole family would come over. This is when my grandparents were still alive, and we'd have like all my cousins, everybody, all my aunts, all my uncles. All in one place to the point where there's like probably forty people, or so. Damn, at Christmas. really? Yeah, that's every great. time. Yeah, that's see, that's and the we old would go days, through huh? and be like, oldest to youngest, or youngest to oldest, they'd open presents. You have to sit there and watch everyone open their presents, and the family just kept growing and growing. So many grandkids that it got crazy, and it would be like a six hour thing, and they would be strict about it like if you open your presents and you were a kid they'd be like you have to watch grandma open seven hours from now you know what i mean so we'd all sit there and then when my grandparents died it was like my parents or my mom and her siblings didn't talk anymore so it's like we never saw these people again so christmas ended up be going like completely downhill like yeah. somewhere i don't know when i was like 13 or so 14 or so yeah i say i was a little bit before uh that for us but yeah but it was yeah. always like so much fun to be, and then and then after that, like it just became like another day almost. Do you know what I mean? Like right. you'd have like the morning or whatever, but it wasn't the whole like family gathering like yeah. it was. Yeah, it's interesting. That was the same way for us. We had a really big Italian family, and it would be everyone at my grandmom's house, and we'd stay there for a few hours, and then we'd all go, including her, to one of her sister's houses and see everybody and the cousins over there, everybody hanging out. Then we bounce all of us together now going over to another uh, sister's house. And it's all these great aunts and cousins and just hanging out. Man, I I really do miss it. Um, and I remember, too, like 
what I didn't realize is my town, ta- my family's Italian. So when I would date girls and go to their shit, and I'm like, you know, where's this and this, this, this one lady's fucking pouring rum on a cake and lighting it on fire. I'm like, who, who the fuck's your god? You know, <laughs> yeah. where the hell are the stuffed shells, bitch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so Italians I was like, do where's it that? particularly. Like, oh. They have yeah. the cookies. You have all that. the traditional shit. Yeah. Plus, right. It's not like you're just getting this. You want your turkey, your mashed potatoes, your fucking ham at Easter, whatever. It's all there. Sure. But it's also all this shit over here. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to eat off this side of the table. Yeah, yeah, Sitting yeah. at the, Did you have it? You obviously had a kid's table. Oh, yeah, You had yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. right? We had so many people at go, growing up that it was just, it was insane. It was like, looking back, you're like, oh, man, that was almost like torture or a lesson in discipline or something to like open your presents and then you can't even like go and play with them. You have to wait through all oh, of the people. Obviously yeah. the gifts would get less, but it would get really lo- <laughs> like the grandparents would get the most gifts probably. That's why your shit's still in boxes. You got o- you were yeah, over exactly. it by the time I was you were like, able I to forgot play. I even I got it. Yeah. Got <laughs> by the time. And then it would get, it was, I, toward the end though, it would get frayed. Like I said, so many grandkids were being born that it was like, You know, it was a small fortune to buy presents for everybody. So it had to be a policy like either I have to buy presents for everybody or I buy presents for none of them. So then you start getting less as you get older. You know, you'd be like, I think I was like, you know, 14 or so or something like that. And I would get like three gifts. I'd be like, okay. (laughs) So now I'm just like a prisoner to this process. I'm in the middle somewhere and I'm going to sit around here and watch everyone open presents. I'm just going to come to me. I'm going to be like, cool socks. Cool, right, yeah. this, you Thanks know, it'd be guys. like three Another gifts. And I, yeah, and then I'd just still sit there for the rest of it. It was, it started getting torturous, you know, as we got older. But I remember um, once we found out Santa wasn't real, it, it definitely took some shine off of Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I, my brother and I would sneak down at like three or four in the morning when Christmas was set up. And we knew our parents would be asleep, exhausted. And we'd go down there with a little roll scotch tape and we would just tear a corner and be like, you know, we got the Millennium Ball game. And then tape it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, got a baseball bat. My mom would continue, even though she knew we knew, she would still like save some presents to put out until like three in the morning and write Santa on them. And I'd be like, thanks for the such and such. And she'd be like, Santa brought that. And I'd be like, okay, thank Thanks, you. Mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. <laughs> he did. He, he brought did. that for you. That wasn't me. That was, and she would like maintain that ruse, despite it, knowing we knew. It all changed, obviously. When my dad died like right after Thanksgiving, and then that was it. I can remember moments of Christmases. I can feel the heat still from the fireplace, all that shit. Once my father died, I, I swear to you, I can't pinpoint a fucking Christmas. Beyond right. after, you know what I mean? Like I'm I just, I, I'm just having that now. Like since I'm like, I moved to oh, LA, that, that was my when I was eight. That Christmas yeah. was when I was ten. Now, I mean now, but since he died, I can't. Right, I can't. Now, once my daughter was born, that's when it began it, yes, for me course. again. You know, so I, but it's still you're talking about thirty fucking years of Christmases, sure. and I can't remember like one where I did something where I'm like, fuck yeah, Christmas. Yeah, I haven't gone home for Christmas since the first year that I moved here. And I've been here for Christmas the whole time. And one one Christmas I went to Tom's house. But the, other than that, the other couple, I couldn't tell you what I did. Last year, I don't even. Right. I told you, I just remembered what I did for New Year's like two seconds ago. <laughs> last right. year, it was just such a blur. Yeah, last year for us was Like, COVID I think I Christmas. Twitch streamed on Christmas. <laughs> Might do that again this year. Uh, I don't know. But I um, New Year's was always like a holiday that I worked on since I was like Me, yeah. working in radio even. Because I would board Any up. Any service industry people out there, oh, bless sure. you all, always working the fucking holidays. And I then, know working in hotels, I never had a day off. I would either be doing like, when I first started radio, I would be doing like the board production, like board hopping, like a, an event during the midnight ball drop. Or then I started hosting those. And then I started doing comedy shows every New Year's because I thought like, what else am I going to do? Like, it's cool. I'm making money. I still get to like hang out and drink or whatever and- and have fun like doing comedy during new year's was like the best way to do new year's i thought for a long time yeah well you're also you're amongst the the masses who are all out there drinking you can join them if you feel like sure. it work at the same time I mean, it's a pretty unique thing to new be year's able to out do here's that. weird i'll tell you because it'll be like five four three two one and then it's like last call yeah back home it's four but it already, last call, but it so. already just fucking ha- you know you just watched it yeah, yeah, but you it's just I mean? weird, it's weird to like go too. to go home at one. Life on tape delay. Yeah, it's str- well, that's true too. Yeah, you're watching it throughout mm-hmm. the East Coast and then the right. Midwest and et cetera. So yeah, it is weird out here. 
West Coast New Year's. But there was one year I did a, it wasn't a ball drop. It was a guitar. Hard Rock Cafe does like a guitar drop down this giant building. And uh, I was hosting it. So I had to go out. Like it's a stage. There's bands. And people are out in the crowd. And so when it came to do the countdown, the Wailers were on stage. You know who the Wailers are? Like mm -hmm. Ziggy Marley, Bob, I guess. Yeah, or Bob, Bob Marley's kids, band, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and his kids doing it now. So they're on stage. They're all fucking blazing. And they're up there. They're playing like Jamin or whatever they're doing. And they're like, it's mid. They're about, they're telling me, they're like, it's about to be midnight. And I'm like, well, they're playing a fucking song. What do you want me to do? They're like, get out there. And they don't tell, I don't no. know where I'm at, right? So like, I just go out there and I'm, not, I'm like, uh, 10. You're not, interrupting the way Bob yeah, yeah, Marley's yeah, yeah. fucking kids. Yeah, well, Bob Marley's dead, but it's the kids, yeah. Well, they're, they're supposed to be done. They're supposed to know. <laughs> they're on weed time. And yeah, yeah. They're just like, we jamming. I'm like, oh, shit, dude. So I run out there, and I don't know where I'm at in the – like, I don't have a precise atomic clock to tell me, like, start counting down now. They're just like, it's going. The thing started coming down. And I'm like, uh, eight. No, you started seven. eight. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, just yeah, threw dude, it in random I just, and I just like, because it was already going. So I just, and eight. I, dude, I totally blew it. Like, there you go. You were about four seconds late. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, I never did that gig again. I got, <laughs> the next year they got someone else. So like, you blew the whole gig. The whole gig was the countdown. <laughs> I'm like, well, I hosted the Your whole, whole event. job was 10 seconds. Yeah, they're like, it was, like, yeah, but that's the most important part, and you fucked it oh, up. Oh, God, that is hilarious. They're like, yeah, the New Year started hilarious. at 12.01 for us. <laughs> I was like, it's not, so I was like, fucking whalers, they ruined my $500 gig or whatever it was at the time, and it was like, that was important to me, and I was fucking pissed at them, and I remember I ended up like doing a couple shots afterwards, and literally just, they gave me a hotel room in that hotel that the event was at and i just went up to the hotel room it couldn't have been 12 25 and i just took my suit off and just laid in the bed and went to sleep that was it yeah that was the end of my new year i woke up at like 3 a.m i go oh man i really fucked that new year up you know i didn't even do anything fun when it comes to skin care since i've been a teen i've always had skin i was uncomfortable with from the pimples to uh, blackheads, all of it, bags under my eyes, everything. I've tried everything going all the way back over all these years with skincare. And Disco is my new favorite. Disco is a clean skincare brand based in Austin, Texas. All Disco products are created specifically for male skin issues like under eye bags, dark circles, acne, razor burn, oily skin, dry skin, and wrinkles. Products are easy to use, effective, and affordable. They take the guesswork out of taking care of your skin. The stick is formulated with caffeine, peptides, and moisturizer to transform those under-eye bags after a long night of partying, gaming, working, or whatever your vice may be. The applicator is easy to use. You just roll it on under your eyes, you pat it lightly, and boom, you're good to go. If you want to check out this, go and try their incredible skincare products for yourself we have a special offer for my Honeydew audience. Go to letsdisco.com slash Honeydew or enter Honeydew at checkout for 30% off your first order. That's letsdisco.com slash Honeydew for 30% off your first order. Thank you, Disco. Dudes, skincare is not just for the ladies. Trust me. Now, let's get back to the dude. I told this story before, but I, I know I've never told you this. So when I first moved here, I was a uh, production assistant for what was then Fox Family Channel. It later became ABC, and now mm -hmm. I think it's like Freeform or something mm -hmm. like that. And we started this thing then. When I was there, we created this. They did, and I was working on it called 25 Days of Christmas. It was going to be this promotion, which I think still runs all sure. through every version of whatever Fox Family was. And the first year, I'm a production assistant, and they're doing this um, giveaway. It's $25,000 giveaway, and it, it's open to anyone in the continental United States, mm. okay? And they need a PA to go on this shoot with this producer named Allison, who was the shit. She and I used to go. She, she was like, I'm going to see Tom Petty at the Fillmore. I was like, fuck yeah, and fuck. I've always wanted to go to the Fillmore, and I would love nice. to fucking see Tom Petty. And we road trip up. And so um, – She's like, I want Ryan to come. And I was like, awesome. And she's like, it could be anywhere, Ryan. I was like, fuck yeah. Hopefully it's Florida. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, hopefully yeah. it's somewhere warm. Sure. You know, let's go. 
And um, this lady wins, and it's Three Mile Island, fucking Pennsylvania. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's Three a, Mile Island? It's a trailer park. Why did they pick her? That she won. Oh, she just won? Yeah, oh, that goes to show a, it's not rigged, I she, guess. It was not rigged. You're going to a nuclear waste dump. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> of all the fucking places we yeah, can go, that's, that's where like we're going. going to Fallujah. I mean, you might as well just go uh, to a war zone. You're going to get radiation. So, like, that's where we're going. Like, okay. And I'm like, what's the what's the deal? Like, okay, the the gist of the promo is that Gary Coleman has been hired and agreed <laughs> to uh, play this oversized elf, and it's basically this elf is delivering. Uh, Oh, and is oversized. It oversized the elf? Maybe, maybe he wasn't. Okay, but the was check he was delivering oh, was, oversized. was oversized. I misspoke. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, he's delivering like one of those humongous prices right style checks. Like right, the right. whole the check is oversized. He's average correct. size for an elf, yes. For, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well said. And he's this plight of him taking this check across country to wherever because it could be anywhere. Right. And um they're gonna shoot him, he's gonna fly. And then we're going to be like literally in and out in one day. We're going to not, I don't even think we're spending a night. Wow. So they, um, they're like, you're going, the ladies in Three Mile Island. Here's your flight info. Here's Gary's stuff. You guys are flying in um, a little bit ahead of him. We're like, okay. Oh boy. And then when we land, yeah, Gary, Gary missed his flight. We're like, did he miss it? Did he miss it? Yeah. <laughs> Did he miss it? Or did he see where it was going? So we're like, how about, did you talk to the driver that was supposed to pick him up? And the driver was covering his ass. That driver's like, I got out of my car. I've I've done this with this guy before. Oh, I went sure. to his door. I knocked multiple times. No answer. Wild. I'm telling you, he just did not show. He's a no-show. He's not late. He's a he's ghost. Yeah. So, but he's supposed to be here today. And now he's not. And we're shooting in a few hours. Uh-oh. And they're like, Allison looks at me, and she knew I did comedy and stuff. We were super cool. And she's like, "Will you be the elf?" And I was like, "Nope, there's, I'm definitely not doing. I'm not fucking doing that." And she's <laughs> like, "Listen, maybe we could get you your SAG after car. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not doing this." She's like, "We could, we could figure out a way to get you paid for this though. If you're gonna perform on camera, then they gotta pay you more than your PA rate, which was a hundred dollars a fucking yeah, day." Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm like, I don't want to do it, and. Again, we're super cool. We blaze and stuff. She's like, just put the fucking clothes on. And do they even fit you? <laughs> no, dude. I put his little pants on. Oh it's my all, it's, Lord. I mean, it's all my nutsack that's and shit. What I'm you know saying. what I mean? Yeah, like, I can't like, get on camera yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. So like where she's like, profane. <laughs> she's like, will you fucking. So I walk out of the bathroom dressed like that. I mean, the shirt's. Uh, she is <laughs> yeah. dying. And she's like, if we can go to the mall and get you some clothes, would you do it? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. She's like, please. I'm like, fine. But. You got to call them and get me something yeah, paid yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Taft Hartley, it was called, if to get you right into SAG after. Or well, I don't even think it was SAG after then. I think it was just SAG. Sure, then. sure. So, or after, whatever the fuck. So, they're like, yeah, we'll pay them. We'll try to help them with that. So, we go to the mall and um, we had to get Gap Kids. And I couldn't remember something happened where it was. Oh, no, we had to take his clothes back to Gap Kids. We go to me, we get Gap, and we get <laughs> Gap a smock. Kids? And it had it was where we had to get his shit at Gap Kids. That's why we were there. <laughs> so we go to Gap, get my shit. And then I go, all right, if I'm going to do this, I want to be able to call the shots on, like, what these little things we are we're doing. So, like, while we're driving to the mall, there's, for some reason, there's an outhouse, a little fucking porta potty in the middle of a cornfield. And I was like, I want to come out of that with the check. Like, I just took a shit in there and like, okay, we shot that, me coming out. Like, I took a shit in this That's random thing. The van broke down, so I'm, like, laying under it, and they're shooting me with my little elf shoes out and shit. <laughs> And then we get to the house, and I've met the lady and everything, and I'm going to be honest. like The, tr- the trailer park house. She not was the, in a trailer. and Not the house. Yeah. And it, it hit home for me because I've never lived in a trailer, but I've lived in an apartment that might as well have been a fucking sure, trailer because yeah. it was just a like a tiny square living room here, a tiny square kitchen next to it, and then it's literally a hallway. Yeah. And off that hallway are rooms, one, sure. two, three, and that's fucking it. Right. And this was... I mean, we were a step above that in that apartment, right, right, right. I felt like. And we had kerosene heaters. Did you ever use those? <laughs> we were, um, you know I the ones so, I'm talking like camping, about? Yeah. But I mean, big floor ones. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And she had them. 
But, you know, my brothers, again, this is something that if your kid falls and hits it, they're going right, to ruin their yourself. face. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. but what are my brothers and I doing? We're over there spitting loogies on it, watching oh, it sizzle. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just fucking pig boys. You know? <laughs> That's dirty funny. touch it, dirty touch it. Oh, that's so dirty funny. touch it. And they grab their s- hand, put it on. Like, ah, you motherfucker, <laughs> you know. And we're filling it with care. We're in middle, you know, we're in fucking elementary school and shit. Filling it middle school, filling it with kerosene. Yeah, kerosene. Yeah, You're leaving crazy. your kids home alone. In a, with inside, kerosene. by the way, in an apartment yeah, building yeah, that could blow up <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not your house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A complex, an entire complex of people. So you know, she has to now. We have to tell her, of course, and she's. I wish we were rolling when you tell her, but they have to tell her ahead of time for legal reasons. Sure. She's obviously not a good actress, of right. course. And now I'm out on this porch. And it's, by the way, it's fucking pencil. It's freezing. I right. am in sweats and rubber elf shoes. I am f- in a smock. I'm fucking yes. in a turtle. I'm freezing. And I'm just out there like, go do it again. I'm going to town. like, oh, my God. And while I'm out there, <laughs> the fucking school bus pulls up. Oh. And all the kids see me. And oh, they boy. are going nuts. Like in a good Mr. way? Yeah, they oh, can't okay. believe it. Mr. Elf! Mr. Elf! They, they, they don't even know why a fucking elf is on the porch in a trailer <laughs> park. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck's happening? Mr. Elf. Mr. Elf, they're screaming. I'm just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I right? thought they were like, you're a little tall to be an elf. They're just fucking <laughs> nah, with you the whole time. They're throwing they couldn't shit. get over that something festive was and different than Santa was oh, in the sure. neighborhood. And you know, they're cameras freaking probably out. too. Yeah. And the kids come in, and I gotta stand there and do the check with them and i got my photos of it the thing ran i remember a friend ba- i'm back in maryland visiting and some friends like i just saw you on five nights and no you didn't <laughs> like yes i did i go no nah, that was not me i don't even work there like well that guy looked just like you i said it wasn't my hand <laughs> ah, but it was God that's damn. good when you have a twin too you could blame it on him. <laughs> he doesn't look like me <laughs> oh that's right okay that's hilarious and then I get back, and what does Gary Coleman do? Gary Coleman starts lying, saying, I was there, and you guys fucked up. And so what do they do? They, they, pay, them they pay Gary Coleman. What do they do to me? Nothing. They didn't pay you? They didn't pay oh me. My they didn't God. help me with SAG or after whatever the fuck it was. They didn't give me a fucking day off. Oh Nothing. Oh, my God. Nothing. Fucking That's what they business. did. Gary fucking Coleman got paid. Ugh. That's yeah. gross, dude. That I did, uh, I did like... um. A sh- my last girlfriend and I broke up on New Year's Eve because I did a comedy show. On New Year's Eve? Yeah, because I did a comedy. I, I Like I said, I was doing comedy shows every year. And I did. it was me, so- Dan Soder, and this guy, James Davis. The three of us were doing like a weekend and New Year's Eve fell in it. So it was like three shows. It was like, it was o- New Year's Eve was always a big check. You know, that's why I love doing it too. And I always pick comedy gigs over girlfriends at the time and so i was like yeah i'm working new year's eve so i don't know she's like well can i come and i was like no i mean it's like i'm gonna be on stage during i can't even like kiss you at midnight you're just gonna be sitting alone in the showroom like why bother she's like well i want to go i want to go i'm like all right fine and then that day she's like i'm sick and i'm like okay well then don't come she's like no i'm still gonna come and i'm like not a good idea but whatever (laughs) so she (laughs) So she comes to the show and afterwards, you know, we do the midnight thing. I say hello to her. And then like afterwards, we're just like waiting to settle up and like we're blazing in the green room and like, I don't know, 20 minutes go by and she's like, when are we leaving? I'm like, we are not ever leaving. I'm, I got to drive these guys. They want to do stuff. I'm going to go with, you know, like I'm the MC. I got to drive the headliners around or whatever. I got to take them back to the hotel. She's like, well, uh, I just, I don't feel good. I want to go home. I'm like, go home then. I will see you when I get home. Uh, and so I just broke up with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough. We've been dating for like years. And I was just like, this is the end. This is the done. Like, I'll see you when I get home if you want to talk about it. But we are done. Broke up with her right then and there. And was I haven't had a girlfriend since then. That was like ringing in 2016 or 2015 or something like that. It's that's been, not that long ago. Yeah, oh, I yeah. guess that's not that long ago. But yeah, it's uh, well, it's more than five years at this point, I think. But yeah, it was just like I realized in that moment, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to love a girl more than I love doing this. You know, this, it was is, our, this is our passion. I yeah, know yeah. people don't get it because, you know, what also a lot of people don't love their jobs. That's true, too. You gotta yeah. remember that. A lot of people hate their jobs. Of course. So they can't understand how in the fuck you could love your job and pick what they view as work over them because they don't like what they do. So they must assume you don't. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
especially somebody who doesn't have any passion for anything, dating those types of women is like soul sucking when they don't have anything to really latch onto. And then they latch onto you and your shit. And you're like, whoa, I'm still <laughs> like, I can't be the uh, shining star in this relationship here. You know what I mean? I'm still trudging it out on my own. So yeah, that it just was a real eye opening New Year's Eve. That one for sure. <laughs> going into it, going like, we are done. Happy New Year. <laughs> Start new Starting year a off, brand right. new year off single. Singy for the new year. <laughs> <laughs> I did a gig one time. You'll appreciate this. I got hired. Brian Baldinger, my man Brian Baldinger is the one that booked me for this. I was the, I can't remember what year it was now, but I was the LAPD robbery and homicide unit's Christmas detective. Okay. For a role? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was like their co- a corporate basically, but it's for the LAPD oh, robbery oh, oh, and homicide okay. units Christmas party. Okay, I see. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's it's just on the other side of downtown, off the ten. It's like a right. country club up on the hills. Real, I'd never. I've been past it a million times. Of course, never been up to it, but sure. Really nice place, and um, it's probably two thousand. <clears throat> excuse me, six or seven. It probably is, and um. They're telling me, like, one guy, one guy from the entire department is in contact with me. And he's telling me, say this about that. You can say this oh, about this no, person. Yeah, and I was like, mm. but I knew that. And I yeah. was like, I'm not going to do any of that. He's like, you can talk about this guy because he's like the tech guy. I was like, no, 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 no. But language, whatever. He's like, do whatever you want. So I get there. And they're like, we have food. You can come and eat. And I'm like, I already know what f- your food is at the buffet. I'm not going to fuck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe after. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get there, and you're going to do, you know, 45 minutes. I'm like, okay. And um, it's middle of the day. It's like 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock. All brightly lit. There are babies running around on the floor. Oh, and no. Children all over the place. I can't do that, yeah. Christmas tree, huge over here in the corner. And then when I get there, the guy I haven't been dealing with says, no foul language, no this, no that, no nothing. Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I get up, and there's a little old-school podium, you know what I mean? Like a principal's podium up there, that wood shit. And I go grab the mic, and I go to start walking the stage. <laughs> that motherfucking mic went about this far. Uh, and I go, no. I go, you guys don't have a mic I can move? Like, no. I it's one of those podium mics. Still, like, yeah. As soon as I bet that here, it's yeah. like, I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm stuck standing dead still for 45 minutes. Like you're giving minutes. a speech. And all I, I, the first thing I said was, look, they, they don't want me to say, they told me I can't cuss. I, here are all the rules they told me. I was like, you guys are eating sandwiches over dead bodies, but I guess I can't say fuck up here. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. die. And then I just go, all right. And what I had done was research of all the open cases that are still out there. And I was like, all right, Biggie, who's on it? Who's oh, on it? Where no. are they? Like, He's over there. I'm like, where are we at? <laughs> RFK apparently is still unsolved. <laughs> who's on that? Like, He's over there doing that shit. That's so crazy. So that's all I did for like 45 minutes was talk to him about open cases and who's on them and shit That's like great. That. Would you just Google them at the time? Yeah, I was like, I just wrote open unsolved cases, LA uh, Police Department. They would have things in there, like still unofficial. And they're there laughing. They're like, yeah, yeah, we don't know. It's like, like, nah, we don't even. They got the bulletin board where it's like a clown on there. He's supposed to be working on it now. He's here. (laughs) It's that scene in Dark Knight where they're like, we're following all the leads of Batman. And it's like (laughs) Abraham Lincoln's on the board or whatever. (laughs) That was was tough. But one of the worst ones I ever did was um, Full Charge and I, Matt Fulcheron and I did this Christmas gig. It was same time too. It was right around the same time. Same year? I think it was because I was um, I was living in uh, the same apartment when this happened that I remember it was so bad. He picked me up where I was in Sherman Oaks and we go out to like the Deep Valley and it's this uh, Armenian dentist and he ha- he had a he threw a party for his patients and his employees like a bunch and so it's a it's a big ballroom like where i where i come from in maryland we have these places called martin's west okay. martin's east and they're just ballrooms okay you know what i mean it's a building it's got like four of them in there and they'll sure. have proms there or weddings there it's just a big ass ballroom and mm-hmm. that's what this shit is and it's big and they got a live band and stuff and then again we're each doing 20 minutes and i gotta go first and i go up and i mean First of all, most people don't even th- understand what we're saying. Sure, because it's like muff, like the speakers are in the yeah, corner. Yeah, and also there's a language barrier for sure. Oh, Homeboy sure, yeah. Is, well, that's you know, true, yeah. Iran. I thought you meant because the shitty-ass ballroom. That but, too. Yeah. Like you could not – 
you couldn't this this mic you could you could move left or right but you couldn't step forward or else it was crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people were like, God, just, but forks are clanking the tables yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit and there's just one table and they are fucking loving it everyone else doesn't give up like you they're talking sure way loud but this one table of four right here is eating it up and that's just that's i just dove just in. stuck in with those yeah to this day i've never it's a uh, set's never felt longer. I'm on stage going, how much longer full charge? You'd be like 13. I'm like, oh, that was God. seven. Oh, God. That was seven. You're like, oh, I did five dude. jokes. <laughs> I did five jokes in seven minutes. Dude paid us. This, these four went over and told him how much they loved it. So he was happy paid us. And I was back home probably in like two hours, two and a half hours. Wild. Back fucking home. It was awful, but the money was all right. That's the thing. Like those shitty, like holiday party gigs, they like, you know, in the years past, those used to be like, you make a nut doing those, but they were torture. I did a oh. holiday party for like, it ended up being like this bowling league had their like annual banquet and holiday party or whatever. And they did the same thing. They like rented out a room in like a VFW or something like yeah. that. And it was like four of us. We had to fill an hour and which is nothing you'd think, right? 20 minutes each. But yeah, like you said, it was like torture. And I remember during my set, I went like th second last. One of the, ta these are adults, middle, like older than me adults, middle age, you know, fifties. They're now, by the time I go on stage, it's like maybe 40 minutes in, they're wasted. And now they're ignoring everything that's going on. Like you're just talking into noise. And so like the two guys that went up before me, they were like, I just talked for the time. They're not even paying attention. And it's like four or five full tables of people. When I went up, now they're throwing things at each other, like children. These are employees who know each other. These are like people, like adults. adults, like in a bowling league or whatever. Like, oh yeah, you know, like eight teams in a bowling, like some bowling league had this holiday party. So this table's a team, and this table they're throwing shit at each other while I'm on stage, and I like all of a sudden became an old man. I'm like, are you children? Like I started like lecturing them for throwing rolls and shit at each other, and like for there was like a split second where they like kind of were ashamed, and then one guy was like, "Fuck you," and he just. <laughs> And he just threw like a roll at me. God, and then I go, fun. all right. And I just walked off and I told the guy, I'm like, you better fucking pay me regardless. Like I had shit. How long were you in me. there? How I was long? on stage probably like by the time I got off 15 minutes, probably not even 20. And they like, I derailed the set at like probably 10 to like lecture. Yeah. them. And then I'm trying to like get them back by making fun of them. And they kind of were like. Like I said, I like thought I was winning at one point, and then the one guy just like, and then they all laughed at what he did, and I go, "Well, I've lost." <laughs> yeah, that's an L right there. And I got the, I did get paid, and we're drinking afterwards. These days, I would have just been, especially with your skill set, just calling color commentary. Oh sure, you no, know, I mean like, I would have, I, I, I would have had some more, heat on them biscuits. I would have had more fun <laughs> yeah, with right. it oh, now, yeah. but back then I was yeah, like, then I don't you'd know, be yeah, encouraged for inciting a riot. Oh in sure, there. I don't know what Somebody they were. Somebody gets hurt. Like, <laughs> yeah, he was yeah, encouraging yeah. it. He yeah. told him to throw the biscuit. Who knows how it could have gone? They were so lit, these people. <laughs> to the point where afterwards I was stuck there. I had I'd gotten a ride with one of the other guys and he's like waiting to settle up for all of us because he's like, I'll make sure we get paid. Don't worry. Because I was like, they better fucking pay us. I'm not leaving here until they do. So he's like, I'll take care of it. So we're like waiting there afterwards amongst these people at the bar and they'd come up and be like, oh man, that was great. <laughs> and you're like, what did you watch? <laughs> yeah, right. And they're like, oh, we had so much fun. And I'm like, all right then, I guess. Like, <laughs> what do you all do yeah, for fun? Yeah, man? yeah, yeah. I was like, that was the most miserable. <laughs> I want to go jump into traffic right you now. You also <laughs> realize people don't know how to have fun. Yeah, <laughs> like that was fun. They, they were like, we had a food fight, and they're all tossed. You know, they're all drunk, and I, so I'm just like drinking beer with these people. They're like, wasn't that the best? I'm like, no. Uh, it was the worst yeah. day of my life. <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, I got hit in the face with a roll too. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I just walked off stage. I've told this now. You're making me. This is not holiday, but this is a food fight story. It's the it's the greatest food fight in the history of. I'm gonna just say high schools in Maryland mm. because I have uh, friends that I went to high school with whose children now go there. Oh, okay. And it's still the rule is still in place. In 1990, I'm a junior. My buddy Mark Penn at the time is a senior. And for a few weeks, school hadn't been in in long, but for a few weeks there was a rumor 
that this massive fucking foo fight was going to go down. And it was like fourth period. And I remember we used to have – we had a three-tiered uh, cafeteria, a little smaller area, top tier, down to a little bit bigger. And then the bottom was the biggest. And that's mm. where the food was and the snacks and all that shit. And we had the early lunch that we hated because mm-hmm. it was like a – I don't know, like 10.50 or something. Yeah, like, and then wow, we had the whole, day yeah, the whole fucking day. Yeah. But that's the one we have. And um, everyone's been talking about it. And Mark Penn got tired of hearing that bullshit. And Mark Penn's like, I'm starting that shit today. I was like, Dude, <laughs> if you do it, if you throw, I'm going. I'll go. Oh, but I'm not God. starting it. He's like, I'm I'm gonna start it. So that day we sit up on the on the top tier. It's Pizza Friday. We got our milkshakes, everything. And Mark Penn is sitting where I am, and I'm sitting where you are. And the next tier is behind me, mm. and the whole floor is down there. And Mark Penn just looks at me and doesn't say anything, and he takes his chocolate milkshake, and he just fucking chucks that motherfucker. Oh my God. It is a goddamn chocolate like milkshake a grenade. grenade. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it hit that bottom floor, and kaboom. Oh and I'm my telling God. you, it was like a fucking trigger. Everybody, whoa, I threw wow. my shit, and then free for all. Shit's hitting the fucking wall and sliding down oh like home God. of the lions. It's all coming down here, and people are going nuts. Teachers are running out. The kids are coming out of class. And it was like see. instant. Instant. Wow. Everyone had been waiting. And when that fucking milkshake hit, people were flipping tables off. God, getting hit oh with cu- cu- cups of corn, pudding, you fucking name it, burgers, fries, all the fucking shit's coming <laughs> everywhere. And I'm telling you, I think school started, what, September? This just might be, I really don't remember, but it's, it's not long. It might be November. Yeah, okay? it's like pretty early in the season. We have to have lunch in silence the oh, rest of the no. year. We can't talk. In silence. Silence. Milkshakes are banned for the school. Oh, my not God. Not just us, the school. And that's 1990, and they are still banned today oh, in 2021, sure. bro. They probably banned them in the still state. Still banned today. These girls hit me up and like, my daughters go to school there, and those milkshakes are still banned. <laughs> I said, oh, you got to be kidding. <laughs> Dude, that's, I <laughs> bet they banned them. Up. There's probably another reason. I mean, they probably would have banned them anyway when Michelle Obama came along. Maybe, but that was years of money making on milkshakes. That's true. Yeah, Either that, that or they were like, fuck this milkshake machine. It's expensive. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, uh, I never I, – that was like my worst nightmare as a kid was a food fight. I never, it never appealed to me. I'm like, I don't want to get food on me. Oh, fuck, man. I couldn't wait. I never, I was always like, God, I hope there's never a food fight. Oh, I just had, I would like to watch one. Yeah, like Thousand Island and lettuce dripping off your ear and shit. (laughs) You're like, oh, this motherfucker got me good over here. I don't like, I don't like being sticky, so. (laughs) That's my nightmare. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. (laughs) I'll tell you another one. This is a Thanksgiving one. Um, you know, this is after our dad's dead, and we go over to my Aunt Marguerite's, and she's got her little family and stuff there, and we're chilling. And one of her daughters is married to this fucking just a real dirtbag piece of shit, like in every sense, just greasy, dirt under his nails or whatever. And we're all having dinner at the Thanksgiving table, and this motherfucker slides his seat back just a little bit off the table, starts clipping his toenails. Oh, no. Toenails are flying. And my brother and at I look at each other. Listen, we just sat down at the table. My brother and I, we got up. We didn't even say anything to anybody. Went right over to the trash. I dropped my whole plate in the fucking oh trash. My, yeah, and we just walked right out the fucking front door. I was like, did that <laughs> shit just happen right Toenails. Now? He's clipping toenails at Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. They're flying. They're flying. <laughs> hey. Ten points. <laughs> For real. That's just disgusting. Kick my butt. You, you definitely have lived alone way too long, yeah. dude. Yeah. I'd Way say. too fucking long. Well, I mean, I've lived alone for a very long time now to the point of like uh, mental breakdowns, and I would never still do that. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. Do I you, what do you do for the holidays? Is your place decorated for Christmas right now? Um, I have some lights, but not really. We have like a little tree. See, I've always, even like obviously everything lost its shine. I, the, the, the toughest Christmas ever was obviously right you know, a few days, it was weeks after my father died, but not just because of that, but also like all these really nice people donated from the school, donated oh, clothes, great. but it makes you feel sure. It makes you feel like even a bigger fucking piece of shit. Sure. You know what I mean? It makes you feel like a loser. And I remember too, this one stuck in my head. I was, I'm a Maryland kid. They're sending Michigan. I wore a Michigan Wolverines fucking sweatshirt for a while just because it was like a donut. And I felt, 
I don't know. I felt like a loser putting those clothes on. Right, like, right, right. I, like you knew I'm, where they came from yeah, or whatever. And I knew they came from a good place sure, of for course. a good reason. But also, it feels like you're defeated, it's too. A reminder Once you put it on, time, it feels probably. like you've lost. Yeah. You know? I, I don't know how, if I can it make that sense. make sense. No, it does. Because it's like you know why you have this yeah. piece of clothes. And then you're going back to school and people are staring at you like, we got you that. And I'm like, oh. It was really, yeah, it was a really nice thing that my dad used to do. But like my grandma lived in this apartment building and there was like a family that lived across or downstairs from her or something. And it was definitely like an illegal uh, immigrant sort of situation. There were, uh, there were Mexican family and there was like two or three kids. And my dad would always like make me, like he would buy toys for them and then make me deliver them and i always just felt strange i'm like i don't know these kids but i mean it was doing a nice thing but it just made me feel Y'all, like you do wonder if it they're made like, me Fuck sad you. though yeah, yeah like it just because i knew and they were like the parents were always very thankful or whatever but uh on a lighter note for christmas time i thought about this after our family kind of dissipated and stopped doing that whole thing we started going to like what I consider my actual family now, like my actual family, my blood relatives, I don't hang out with them at all anymore. Mm -hmm. And now I have like my mom's best friend through most of her adult life. I always called her my aunt Shelly. And then her son is like my best friend growing up since we were like babies. So I consider them like my cousins, you know what I mean? And then their family is my, my cousins too. So we'd celebrate Christmas with them. Like after I started becoming a, in high school age, and around the time, like junior, senior year, I don't know how it picked up, but we started playing beer pong. So it'd be me and my cousin Drew versus our dads in beer pong. And our my the first year we did it, I barely drank. I never really drank. And our dads murdered us in beer pong. <laughs> and so I'm blackout drunk. And I remember we were about to like leave. It was all done. And I'm shit faced and like 17 or 18 years old. And I just was like stumbling around and I thought I was going into the bathroom to puke and I ended up puking in the dog's bowl thinking it was the toilet. Nah. And I left this giant pile of puke in the dog's bowl <laughs> so thinking it was the toilet the trying to flush it and shit. <laughs> you probably did. I don't even don't know. I don't even know. But it was like I couldn't live that down. And then we, you know, every year we kept playing this beer pong or like drinking games. We started doing drinking games with everybody. And, you know, I started partying a little harder as the years went on, so I was able to keep up. But, like, maybe two, three years later, more of the cousins are getting involved, and there is a scandal because somebody puked in the bathroom and used my aunt's white monogram towels to, like, wipe up the puke. The show and towels. So, Yes. No, nah, you know you do. You don't do that with the show towels. The show, like the Christmas time yeah, show yeah. towels, puke on this pure white towel. To this day, I walk. People think I did it, and I swear up and down I did not do it. But no one will believe me. <laughs> Who do you think did it then? I I have no idea. I don't even know. I, at first, I was like, no, because like I didn't do it. So I go like, I thought they were lying, but they showed me the towel. I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. It could have been my little sister. It could have been so. I got the, because I was the dog bowl puker, <laughs> I was the natural <laughs> suspect. And so to this day, like I just saw them for Thanksgiving, everybody. And they're like, remember when you puked and wiped up the to the puke with my beautiful towels? And I was like, that wasn't me. I live, I, I mean, I'll deny it up and down because I know it wasn't me. And I would admit it if it was by this point, you know. Hopefully somebody on their on their deathbed will throw that out for you or something. It was me. I'd be like, I knew it. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I just had a I had a great time in Cleveland. That's my first time in Cleveland. First time doing Hilarities, which is a fucking amazing club. Sam, by the way, over there is yeah, fucking he's great. shit. Thank you, brother, for everything. Uh, Eva came, Eva comes and does helps me do merch and oh, stuff nice. too. And we went to um, the Christmas Story House. Yes. I posted about it and stuff. And then we get there and we buy tickets for a tour. We go to the fucking merch. I mean, they are making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so, is the high high season for that. Too, yeah, you know? I'm saying I'm. I f we're fortunate to be there at Christmas right. for the Christmas Story House. Um, so we go in the merch, and they've got every hat in the fucking movie. I mean, everything yep. from the movie is in that damn store. It's in, it's insane. And I was like, you know, I just want to fucking smoke a joint out in front of the Christmas story house. So, sure. I, I mean, you know, we're waiting for the tour. We're going to get the tour. I'll smoke at a joint. And then I'm looking at the clock and stuff. And I'm like, 
I don't need to take a tour. I was on the porch, got my lamp. Yeah, like, it's not the actual set. Yeah, I don't want to go through this. It's just the facade set. of the <laughs> yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? And Eva always clowns me because she's right. On a macro level, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. On sure. a bigger level of things. On a smaller level, I'll be like, let's go here this weekend. And then I'm like, can we just fucking. You qualify it. Yeah, you can just, we just not do like, that, yeah, please. Well, We've yeah, been out I all I saw the outside and, you know. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do, do that shit, shit too. like yeah, that yeah, all yeah. the time. <laughs> it drives her nuts. And rightfully That's so. And I'm funny. like, I know I do that. I got to work on it. <laughs> so we're smoking a joint. And I'm looking at the house. And she's like, what are you thinking? And she just starts laughing. She's like, you don't want to do the tour, do you? I was like, I don't know. We might be a little bit. You know what? I'm but once but, you realize the tour, it's not like this is where Ralphie shot his eye out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the the set, it's not the set of no, the film. It's, not, it's just I know what house. that all is yeah. about. So I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. So she's just laughing. She's like, you fucking kill me. So I go, but do you care? Because if you want to do it, I'm sure. in. She's like, I only wanted to do this because you said, I was like, great. So we go inside. I'm like, let me find a family with some kids. And so I find this couple and they got three kids. And I'm like, hey, you guys want to go? Because I could see they were like, I go, here's prepaid tickets. I just got to get out. They're like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. And then I look at the three kids. And I'm like, I probably just made you spend more. <laughs> They're pissed. They're like, oh, God. We almost I got out I of just this made thing. you spend money that you didn't want. I go, look, if you can't afford it or whatever, just give them to somebody that, that wants them. Like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> but I always try to do something nice with it or whatever. You yeah, know? sure, sure. Dude, this has been fun, man. Thank you for coming. Oh, and no doing problem. This. Thanks for having me. I actually lived by that uh, Christmas story house. Yeah, you know, I used to live out that way. Did you go by it a lot? I went. I mean, I I I didn't do the tour, but I I definitely took pictures out front of it all the time. It's but fucking, I lived there mostly in the summer. I I moved away around Christmas time, so it was like I remember it started snowing. I go, this is nice here. Oh well. Peace out, Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, fuck your winters, Cleveland. Fuck yeah, everybody's yeah. winters, not just yours. <laughs> but um, it was nice. That's a that's a piece of Americana, legit. For sure. You know? And it's like, wow, that little – and you can see, too. So I started walking the neighborhood because someone told me about it a little bit. I'm smoking my weed and just walking these people's property, you know, yeah, street. I didn't go in their property. And then there's a still one steel mill down the hill. And it's like, oh, so everybody used to probably just work that oh, steel yeah. mill, come up to that neighborhood there. And yeah. Yeah. Everyone had houses. Cool. I mean, being back in Buffalo for the first time in two years, you see that, it's, that too, like with the architecture and everything yeah. like that, you're like, oh man, this is like so old compared to LA, you know, everything yeah. here is like post, I don't know. Vietnam. Yeah. I feel like when I go to San Diego, I'm like, this is a brand new city. Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah, really yeah, feel yeah. like it's a brand you new go city. To Phoenix. Yeah, I'm like, did yeah. they just build this? This is new, man. It's <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of fresh here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to this dude on his balcony uh, or his porch. He's got a night. I go, man, you did a great job with your house. And he's like, thank you. I'm like, you really did. You stand out, man. I'm down there looking up. And he's like, thanks, man. I go, <laughs> he's like, this, this. And then he tells me there was a toy store or to I kept saying toy story, Christmas story two. Yeah. There is? There is, but it's like... A summer thing or something, he said? Yeah, it's like... I forget. I, I think Charles that, Groden the plays right the dad the in corner. that one. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know there was Yeah, one. I think Charles Groden played the dad in that one. Or maybe the dad came back. I can't remember. But it was more about the dogs and the bumpuses next yeah, door and things was, like I that. I mean, they yeah. have maximized the merchandise. They sell that stuffed bloodhound. Yeah, Oh, yeah, crazy. for sure, for sure. Dude, thank you again. Thanks for having me, dude. Uh, happy holidays. Happy and holidays. Happy New Year yeah. to you. And happy holidays and happy New Year to all you. Please plug whatever you'd like. Again. I'm excited for the new year. I'm going to have a Patreon launch in the new year. It's yeah. a lot of, uh, it'll be a, like one whole new podcast a week. And then I'm going to do gambling content and sports content on there, like almost like as often as I can. So that'll just be like popping on here and there but you'll always get a podcast once a week a different podcast than the one i already have and the one i already have isn't going to change so if you subscribe on youtube the josh potter show uh that's free and you can get that every tuesday and then also uh, i'm going to be coming live to milwaukee on the 23rd of january the 30th of january i'll be in uh, new york at west nyack levity live the 2nd of february pittsburgh improv 3rd of February, Raleigh Improv. So those are Boom. the ones for sale right now. So go get those tickets at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram and at J underscore Potter on Twitter. All right. And as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Have a safe and happy new year and come out and see me on tour. Tickets available at RyanSickler.com. Talk to y'all next week.